Now let's go back to the circle of breathing. Circle of breathing, once again, is breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. And the way you could do that is through the back pressure. And the back pressure is created with the mouth being narrowed by the mouthpiece of the didgeridoo, allowing you to build up pressure in your either diaphragm or in your cheeks. Once again, so what you're seeing is the force of my cheeks pushing the air out as I inhale through my nostrils. Now, doing this exercise, you see that my lips are tense. That's only because I don't have any support from the rim of the didgeridoo. But normally, your lips would be a little bit more relaxed and free-flowing. But I cannot circle the breathe with relaxed lips without the didgeridoo. It's impossible. But once I have the support of the rim, then I'm able to circle the breathe. And that's how you get your circle of breathing. Now, you're probably wondering, how do you build up your cheek muscles? Well, in fact, you already have muscles in your cheeks because you daily use it when you're talking and when you're eating. So all you're going to do now is build up those muscles and be subconscious on how those muscles work. And a great way to do it is practice in front of a mirror. <sighs> watching your muscles actually work as you force the air out of your mouth. Now you may get a little bit of spit on the mirror, but totally ignore it. You could wipe it off later on. <laughs> now the whole idea is to breathe slowly. In. Out. In. Out. And later on, when you learn to control the narrow piece where the air flows out, then you're able to speed up the process. So this time I'll do it without the didgeridoo. So you would have noticed that the back pressure is being forced out using my cheeks. Later on, you'll be able to use your diaphragm to push that pressure out as well. But in the beginning, it's important that you understand how it works. Once again, now, don't be afraid of a little bit of spit coming out. That is only natural. In fact, it will happen while you're playing the didgeridoo. And the moist and the conjure will actually run out the other end of the didgeridoo. Hence, sometimes you'll see a puddle at the end of the didgeridoo when some players have been playing for such a long time. This time, you're becoming subconsciously aware of the movement of your muscles. So using your cheeks, you're forcing the air out. So you may practice that a few times at home in front of a mirror and see your muscles actually working, see your cheeks working. The other way you could do it is to actually get yourself a bucket, half fill it with water, place the end of your didgeridoo into the bucket of water and blow. Now. What is that all about, you're saying? Well, what it's all about is the pressure of the water pushing into the instrument and the pressure of you and your cheek muscles forcing the air and the bubbles to come out the other end. It will take some to fill the cylinder up with air and back pressure. That is the equivalent of going for a run around the block for a didgeridoo player. So that's a way of building up. Now, the moment you take your mouth off the didgeridoo, and the mouthpiece, all that pressure is going to come out. 
So therefore, you don't want to release that pressure. You want bubbles to blow out the other end. Ignore any sound that you're making. Ignore the saliva that may come out of your mouth and the sweat. The whole idea is to exercise and <laughs> blow bubbles out the other end. Now, some people may show you this exercise through a glass of water and a straw. That's okay psychologically, but it's not a physical exercise. It's only a mental exercise. This is the physical exercise. I hope you try it and you enjoy it. If you have any further questions, you could always review the video and absorb what's being said. So be patient and absorb everything you're learning.